Good morning, good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise God. Happy Sunday. Happy, happy Sunday to everybody on. Hallelujah. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. I'm going to get myself situated. Oh, happy Sunday. God bless, God bless you, my brother, Brother Norman Bells. Happy Sunday to you. Happy Sunday to everyone that's getting on this beautiful Sunday morning. Happy Sunday, everybody. Happy, happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, my brother. Pray that you're doing well. Brother Norman Bells, thank you for your faithfulness. Happy Sunday, Jill. Missed you last night. Pray that you and the family are all well. Please let me know that you can hear me and see me loud and clearly. Amen. God bless your heart. Suzanne Marrow, happy Sunday to each and every one of you that are getting on the line today. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Happy, happy Sunday to everybody. Happy Sunday, Barbara Roundtree. Happy Sunday to you. Happy Sunday to everybody this Sunday morning. Happy Sunday morning, K Love. Happy Sunday. Happy, happy Sunday. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Rise and shine and give God the glory. Rise and shine and give God the glory. Amen. We had a good service last night in uh, Cranford. Awesome time in the presence of the Lord. Uh, we thank and praise God for his, his uh, anointing. Uh, one of our leaders, Pastor Mark Wright, ministered last night. It was really, really good. If you get a chance, you can listen to the message on uh, the Facebook page. Amen. Scroll right down from here. Amen. So let's fill this news feed up with some hearts and lights for the Lord this morning. Happy, happy Sunday. Happy, happy Sunday to everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I see some people still sleeping. It's only six of y'all on here. Rise and shine and give God the glory. Yeah, rise and shine and give God praise. Yes, let's fill this news feed up with hearts for the Lord. Amen. We thank God for his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. Uh, next Saturday night will be our um, fourth Saturday night, a uh, special time of prayer and soaking. Uh, next Saturday night, 69 Myrtle Street, Cranford, New Jersey, in the Great Room at 5 p.m. From 5 p.m. to 9 p.m., we will have a time of prayer and soaking. So please come and join us next Saturday night as we go before the Lord in prayer. It's definitely praying times that we're living in, so we must stay in the posture of prayer. God bless you, Carol Raptors. Good to see you on this morning. Happy Sunday to you. Amen. We're just going to exhort you. God bless you, Mom Doris. Happy Sunday to you. We're going to exhort you with a scripture this morning and uh, pray this morning uh, for you. So we just pray that everyone is doing well. Come on, y'all. Let's fill this news feed up. Yeah, with hearts for the Lord. Giving God our hearts of praise, hearts of gratitude, hearts of adoration. Amen. To the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord for his goodness, his mercy, and his grace, which is always sufficient for us. Amen. Hallelujah. Happy Sunday to everybody that is on. Amen. Happy Sunday, Mondaris. <laughs> Happy Sunday. Happy Su Sunday, Suzanne Marrow, with my comment section. Oh, okay. All right. Well, Father, we pray that whatever's going on with Suzanne, that she would, her, her comment section on her Facebook page would be all right in Jesus' name. Happy Sunday to everybody. Happy, happy Sunday to every, everybody. Amen. God bless everyone that's on this morning. We're going to just uh, probably have a short service today. Just want to exhort you with the scripture and release prayer to you today in Jesus' matchless name. Amen. Rise and shine. So, yes, announcements next Saturday night, 6 p.m., uh, 69 Myrtle Street. Uh, I'm sorry, 5 p.m. 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. will be four hours of prayer. 69 Myrtle Street, Cranford, New Jersey. Amen. So we give God glory, honor, and praise for all that he has done for us, all that he is to us in Jesus' name. Amen. So we bless God this morning. Happy, happy Sunday to each and every one of you. 
Amen. If God is doing anything great in your life, if you have any testimony, type it in. Let me know what God is doing for you this morning. Anything special, any special uh, things that God is doing for you, type it in. Any, any short testimonies, type it in. Happy Sunday, Claudia Carroll. Happy Sunday, Cassandra Chambers. Happy Sunday to everybody in Jesus' name. Happy, happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday to everybody. We give God praise, glory, and honor for all that he is to us. In Jesus' name, amen. So we just bless the Lord this morning. We pray that your families are well, that your children are well, that your grandchildren are well, that your loved ones are well, husbands, wives, my singles, my widows, widows, we think. And praise God, we pray that everyone is well this morning. In Jesus' matchless name, amen. So we give God praise. I think some people are sleeping in this morning, but we're going to move on in Jesus' name and for his sake. Hallelujah. We just pray that everyone has a good day this morning. Mm. Yes, uh, that's good, Kara. Cleaning more rooms, let go. Of, uh, thank you for prayers. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Happy Sunday, Von A. Jackson. So we just release, <clears throat> continue prayers to Carol that you strengthen her and grace her to do all that she needs to do in Jesus' name. Blessings to Von A. Jackson, to her grandma to uh, her mother, to her family, in Jesus' name. We bless the Lord for everyone that's on this morning. Amen. Your pastor may look a little different. I cut all my hair off, y'all. <laughs> so if I look a little different, it's still me. Amen. So I cut all my hair this weekend. I was tired of it, and I got it cut. So I said, let me address the elephant in the room, just in case y'all notice or don't notice. I cut my hair. I got a haircut, but I feel good. I had those dreads for a long time, probably like 10 plus years, but I feel good. My head feels light. <laughs> L.A. Roselle Sweat, I know. She said, OMG. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Barbara. Amen. It was time. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> After you said, oh my God. <laughs> it's still me, y'all. It's still me. Letty Sloan, good morning. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Good to see you on this morning. Thank you. So to God be the glory. I had to dress the elephant in the room. So <laughs> that's right. I knew I figured it. I know y'all, y'all, we be we be up close and personal. Okay, so I was just, I was saying to myself, he cut his hair, or maybe he just pulled no, it's it's cut. But I like it. It's gonna grow. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let it the top grow out. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Norman Bells. God bless you, Mark Hamlin. Happy Sunday to you. God bless you, Donna. Happy Sunday to you. Mm. Testimony came into some money. Th uh, thought it was only going to be just a little. Amen. Thank God for, we like financial testimonies. Amen. God bless you, Jill. That's awesome. Happy Sunday, Marcia. Blessings to you and the family. Thank you, Claudia Carroll. Thank God for everybody. Yeah, I had to, I had to address the elephant in the room. <laughs> Y'all probably checking your screen to see, was that him or not? It's still me. Thank you, my Doris. God bless you, Maria and family. God bless everybody. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sonia. <laughs> Jill said, I thought something was different. Yes, it was time. So to God be the glory for all he has done. It's 8.03. We're going to begin prayer. God bless you, Katrina Miller. Happy Sunday. Blessings to you and the family. Come on, y'all, for a few minutes. Let's fill this news feed up with hearts for the Lord, giving God hearts of praise and hearts of adoration for another day. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. We bless God for life, for health, for strength, for all that he's done for us this morning. We're just thanking God for another day. Somebody type in another day. Thank God for another day. Who can be the first person to type in another day? Thank you, Don. I appreciate it. Happy Sunday, Minister Steph. Happy Sunday, Mary Llewellyn. Happy Sunday, great people of God. Thank you, Vane. <laughs> Happy Sunday, Mom Roxy Star. We release God's continued healing and strength to you in Jesus' name. Yes, K Love said another day. Katrina Miller said another day. Norman Bell said, thank God for another day. Yes, we thank God for another day that wasn't promised us. Another day to draw closer to the Lord, another day to let God use us, another day to give God praise, glory, and honor in spite of the things that we go through. We thank God for another day. Glory to God. 
Thank you all for tagging people in this message. I ask that those that really enjoy this message share. Press the share button. Do me a favor and press the share button. Mark Hamlin said another day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We give God praise, glory, and honor. Yes, tag them, tag them, tag them. Yes, another day, Maria. Another day, Cassandra. Another day, Sonia Roundtree. Sonia, I miss you. I ain't seen you in a good long time. Happy Sunday to everybody. Let me check my time. 8.04, we begin in one more minute. Happy Sunday to every, everybody. And we thank and praise God for another day. For this is the day that who has made, the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad. And in spite of the challenges, in spite of what we go through, we bless the Lord this morning. Amen. We give him praise, glory, and honor. Okay, it's 8.05 in the worshiping sanctuary. And we start church on time. Every Sunday morning, we're here from 7.55 to 8.05 is meet and greet. 8.05 begins prayer. Let us pray. Father, we bless you. We love you this morning. We thank you for this day, for truly this is the day that you have made. And we come to rejoice and to be glad in it. Father, we ask that you just have your way in this place this morning. Father, as we come to share your word, as we come to uh, encourage your people through the word of God, as we come to hear your voice. Father, we pray that you strengthen your people, your sons, excuse me, and daughters this morning in Jesus name. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy and your grace. And Father, we I pray a special prayer for those this morning that uh, are really going through some challenges. Lord, I pray for those that may uh, be going through hurt and depression and oppression and just going through stuff that maybe no one knows about, but you and them, Lord, I ask that you show yourself mighty and show yourself strong to them this morning in the matchless name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that no weapon formed against your sons and daughters this morning shall prosper in Jesus' name. And Lord, as we come this morning, we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that continues to wash us, cleanse us, purify us, sanctify us from all of our sins, past, present, and future. And we ask you this morning, this Sunday morning, to continue to wash us, to cleanse us, to purify us, to sanctify us, to help us to be all that you desire us to be. We ask that you forgive us, Lord, of everything that we have thought, said, done, spoken against your will and against your way. Lord, if there's anyone that we have offended, we ask that you forgive us uh, for that too and, and give us the grace to go to them and ask for their forgiveness, Lord, in Jesus' name. So, Father, we bless you. We honor you. We worship you for this day. We thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you for the activities of our limbs. We thank you that we have received you as Lord and Savior of our lives. And we say, Lord, have your way this morning as we're on this line. Father, we pray for everyone that's listening, everyone that's watching, every family that's represented here this morning. We pray that you cover families, that you strengthen them this morning, Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, wherever there needs to be healing in relationships, Father God, we pray that you heal relationships that you strengthen families, that you strengthen the singles and the, the widows and the widowers this morning, that you strengthen husbands and wives in Jesus' name, parent relationships, mother-daughter relationships, mother-son relationships, grandparent relationships, Father, in Jesus' matchless name, we thank you that you're our healer and that you're our restorer this morning in Jesus' name. So we call upon your name and we say, Lord, have your way in the matchless name of Jesus. And Father, we even lift up Naira Carter as she's uh, coming in this morning from work. We pray that you strengthen her. We pray that you strengthen those that are working with her this morning. We pray that you move on every hospital floor, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we pray that you heal those that are sick in the hospital and all across this nation, Father God. Those, are, those that are going through physical pain and emotional pain, we thank you that you're the healer this morning and we ask that you strengthen everyone that works today, everyone that works on a Sunday, no matter where they work. Father, we pray that you strengthen them on their jobs and draw them closer to you by your Holy Spirit. And Father, as we go into your word this morning, we pray that your word falls on good ground and that someone is encouraged, someone's life is changed because of your word. Father, we thank you for your anointing that destroys every yoke this morning in the matchless name of Jesus. And we say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Speak to us individually. Speak to us corporately. And Father, I just release your healing wonders. I release healing to those that may be sick in their bodies. I release healing to those that may be low in their spirit. And we thank you this morning that you're the glory and the lifter of our heads, Father God. Let this be a week of change. Let it be a week of turnaround. Let it be a week of open doors. And Father God, even as we're in the month of May, I declare and decree that may God do exceeding 
abundantly above all that they ask, think, or imagine according to the power that works in them. May God open doors. May God make ways. May God bring debt freedom. May God bring joy and peace. May God bring divine connections in this month of May. We say, may God, may God, may God do uh, exceeding abundantly above. May God give uh, give God surprises. May God open doors. May God make ways in the matchless name of Jesus. If you're believing God for some things to happen in this month of May, I want you to prophetically type in May God. May God blow your mind. May God open doors. May God answer prayers. May God touch your loved ones. May God touch your sons, your daughters. May God touch you as a single person. May God touch your marriage. Those that desire to be married, Father, may God bring the divine connection into your life in the matchless name of Jesus. May God bring you into debt freedom. May God lift every burden. May God open every door in the matchless name of Jesus. May God sever every ungodly connection in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. That's a good one. May God sever and release every ungodly relationship, every every draining friendship, relationship, no matter what it is, may God sever it in the matchless name of Jesus. May God touch your body. May God touch your mind. May God answer your prayers. Hallelujah. That's good, Brother Mark. May God give uh, Mark Hamlin, may God give him a new career. Father, I release a new career for Mark Hamlin, Lord, in Jesus' name. You said, what things soever we desire, when we pray, if we believe that we receive it, we shall have it. So, Father, I pray this morning for my brother that you bless Mark Hamlin with a new career, that you open the door, that you make a way where there seems to be no way, that you show yourself mighty, and that you show yourself strong on his behalf, Lord, in the matchless name of Jesus. May God open new doors. May God make new ways. May God cause every bill to be paid in, in, in your life in Jesus' name. May God bring you into debt freedom in the matchless name of Jesus. May God do exceeding abundantly above. That's such a good prayer. Ephesians 3.20, it says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask, think, or imagine according to the power that works in us. May God uh, allow you to walk and live in Ephesians 3.20. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes, may God give Katrina Miller new financial status, Father, in Jesus' name. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that your word says, as we give, it shall be given unto us good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Cause all of your people, as they believe in you for financial increase, to be good givers, to be cheerful givers, not just to give uh, to a church or a ministry, but to give as unto the Lord, to, to uh, uh, have clean hearts. Uh, clean hands and pure hearts, Father God, that whatever you tell them to give and release, that they will do it, Lord, in Jesus' matchless name. For you said with the same measure we meet, it shall be measured to us again. So, Father, we thank you for uh, cheerful givers. We thank you for faithful tithers. We thank you for faithful givers, Lord, in Jesus' name. Because your word says, if we give, then it shall be given unto us. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, that we are good givers, that we give um, to support our local ministries, our local churches. We give as unto you. We give as the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us, Lord, in Jesus' matchless name. So, Father, we bless you and we thank you, Lord, for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. We thank you that we will not rob you of the tithe and the offering, Father God, but we will be cheerful givers that will give as unto you, Lord, that our blessings can continue to flow and flow and flow. For your word declares that you love a cheerful giver, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God, we thank you that we want to give and we do give cheerfully as unto the Lord, not just in our tithes and offerings, but we give whenever you lead us. We thank you for Holy Spirit giving, Holy Spirit led giving, Spirit led giving in Jesus name. So, Father, we bless you. We honor you. We worship you this morning. We thank you for your anointing that's here. I just really sense the presence of God this morning. And I just sense that God really wants to meet us here this morning. And if there's anyone that's up here that's really going through a rough place, you're really going through a rough time, you're really in a hard place this morning, I just feel like the Lord is saying to you to, to stay close to God. 
I don't know who that's for today, but so I just feel like someone's in a really in a hard place. And I, I believe that nobody really knows about it. It's something personal. Maybe you're going through a bout with depression. Maybe you're going through a struggle. Maybe you're going through an inner struggle. I don't know what it is, but the Lord knows this morning. And I want you to know that the Lord is near, that the Lord is with you, that the Lord will never leave you nor forsake you, that we serve a God that fills every void and meets every need. Amen. I, I just sense the Lord saying this morning that you are not alone. Hallelujah. Mm. You may feel alone, but you're not alone. The Lord says you are not alone. I am with you and I am for you. I am with you and I am for you. And the word says, if God be for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. If God be for you, who can be against you? And no matter who may be against you, the word also says that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon. It doesn't matter if it's a family weapon, if it's a job weapon, if it's a friendship weapon, if it's a child weapon, if it's a husband weapon, if it's a boo weapon, whatever. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Hallelujah. And I just sense the Lord saying that no matter, you may feel alone, but you're not alone. Draw close to God. The Bible says if you draw close to God, he will draw close to you. And we all feel alone at times, myself included. We all feel alone sometimes, or we may feel lonely, or we may want somebody special in our life and, and not have that, but God is with you. <clears throat> and in those times of loneliness, call upon the name of Jesus. I've been saying it for years. You all know it. Even when you're by yourself and you don't have the strength to pray, you just release that one word prayer, Jesus. No matter how you're feeling in your emotions, release the name of Jesus. If you're hurting in your body, release the name of Jesus. If you're lonely in your soul, release the name of Jesus. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And the Lord is close to you. <laughs> Amen. The Lord is close to you. The Bible says he heals the brokenhearted and he binds up their womb. <clears throat> Amen. Yes, uh, Sonia, we just released God's strength and healing to you. Everybody on this line, we release God's restoration and healing and favor upon you today. And Lord, we pray that you fill every void for your sons and daughters and that you meet every need, Lord, in Jesus' name. And and, and I hear the scripture too, uh, 1 Peter 5 and 7, it says, casting all of your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. So we have you have to start, you have to begin to cast those cares upon the Lord. A lot of you are going through things and you're, you're, keep, you're holding on to it. You're trying to fix it. You're trying to do it. But the Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 7, cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. So you got to cast your cares, your worries, your fears, your frustrations. You have to give it to the Lord. Uh, Matthew eleven twenty eight through 30, 11, 28 through 30 says, it says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let me say it nice and slow. Matthew eleven twenty eight says, come, Jesus, this is Jesus speaking. He says, come to me. All of you that are heavy and burdened down and going through. And he says, I will give you rest. Hallelujah. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me for I am meek and lowly of heart. And ye shall find rest unto your soul, your mind, your will, your emotions. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Yes, Katrina, man, you have to cast your kids, your family, your bills. You have to cast every care upon the Lord, every care. And some people's cares are not financial. Some people's cares are emotional. You have to give it to the Lord. Some people's cares are, uh, are um, physical. <clears throat> Maybe you're going through some physical challenges in your body. Or you're going through emotional. Maybe you're going through emotional, like an emotional roller coaster, up one day, down one day. But you have to draw close to God. You have to stay close to God in prayer. You have to stay in the word of God. And uh, a lot of you need to stay connected. You need to stay connected to the body of Christ where God has called you to. You have to stay connected. Amen. Uh, if you can make it out to service, it's good to make it out because we draw strength to, to, to one and we draw strength from one another on Saturday nights. We draw strength from one another and our virtual services every Sunday morning at 755. So you have to stay connected. Amen. The enemy wants to get us by ourselves, but there is uh, where there's unity, there is strength. Where there's numbers, there is strength. One can chase a thousand to flight, two can chase 10,000. So we have to band together and come together because where there's unity, there is strength. Amen. So the enemy, he desires to get us all by ourselves. 
so he can try to defeat us, but he can't even defeat us by ourselves. But it's better when you have other people praying with you and fighting with you and believing God with you. Amen. Glory to God. Mm, yes, that's right, daughter. She says, stay connected with the Lord always. Yes. Amen. So, Father, we thank you for this time of prayer, Lord. And I pray that you touch your sons, touch your daughters this morning in the name of Jesus. And, Father God, even as we're still in this month of May, Lord, I release your miracles. I release the miraculous in May. I release the supernatural power of God to be released in May. I release favor in families. Even where there's families that there's turmoil and, and people not talking and there's no agreement. Father, we release restoration to our families in Jesus name, to your children, to your son, to your daughter in Jesus name, to your grandchildren in Jesus name. Hallelujah. Father, we just bring, we pray restoration in our families. Those that may not be speaking to each other, we speak fam, we speak peace in families. In Jesus' name, touch sons' hearts, touch daughters' hearts, touch men's hearts to speak to their families in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless you, LBS More. Happy Sunday. Hallelujah. So we just thank you, Father God, for, for your healing virtue. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your grace. And we pray, Father God, that you heal and strengthen families, that you heal and strengthen your sons and daughters, Lord. In the matchless name of Jesus, we say, Lord, have your way in Jesus name. Amen. No matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, God is with you and God is for you. And the word says, if God be for you, who can be against you? If God be for you, who can be against you? And as I said earlier, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. He didn't say they wouldn't be formed, but he said they would not prosper. Hallelujah. It would not prosper. Like I said earlier, it could be family weapons, <laughs> children weapons, job weapons. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You have to walk in that victory and walk in that assurance that God says, if God be for you, who can be against you? And that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Those, those aren't even in my notes for today, but that's the word of the Lord to somebody that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Glory to God. God's going to cause you to stand. He's going to cause whatever's due you to come to you, whatever God has. Let me tell you something. Whatever God has in store for you, no devil in hell or person on earth can block or stop what God has in store for you. Yes, uh, K. Loves is praying for restoration for my kids with their dad in Jesus name. Great restoration amongst families in Jesus name, in Jesus name. Even even if they just settle it and, and, you know, Father, we just put it in your hands. And Lord, however you choose to work it out for these families, we say, Lord, work it out in Jesus name. Touch hearts, touch minds, bring healing, bring breakthrough, Father, in Jesus. We cast these cares upon you. When you give it to God, you don't you don't tell God how to work it out. We just let our requests be made known to God. And however he chooses to work it out, he works it out. Amen. Hallelujah. So we trust God to work it out. That's a good word. Mm. Somebody type in trust God to work it out. That's a good, good word. Mm. Trust God to work it out. Yes. Then we used to sing a song, Jesus can work it out. Jesus can work it out. Jesus can work it out. If you let him, Jesus can work it out. Jesus can work it out. We say work it out, God. <laughs> trust God to work it out. That's a good word today. Hallelujah. Trust God to work it out. Ma, I release uh, supernatural healing and strength to mom, Roxy Star. In Jesus' name, Father, we release supernatural healing to flow through her body. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And everyone that needs healing, touch bodies this morning in Jesus' name. That's right, LBS More. Trust God to work it out. Whatever it is this morning, trust God to work it out. Amen. You do your part. You do what you can do and trust God. Brother Mark Hamlin, for your new career, trust God to work it out. See, the Bible says, Mark Hamlin, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Glory to God. Yes, open up a door for my brother in Jesus. And one good thing, Mark Hamlin, I'm going to tell you, it's a lot of jobs out here. So it's a lot of jobs and these jobs need good people and these jobs need a... Uh, uh, these jobs need uh, people and they need men. So I don't know what you're working, but you can message me. I can I can turn you on to where I work at because they're always hiring, looking for good men. So if you need 
something. Let me uh, message me. Message me. Amen. Message me. Amen. Yes. Trust God to work it out. All right. Let's get our scripture for today. Wow. It's almost uh, this. Real, this is going to be real quick. Yes. May God heal the emotional hurts and families. Yes. In your families in Jesus name. Yes. Katrina Miller. We pray for God to heal emotional pains and hurts and unforgiveness. We just released supernatural healing to, to Katrina Miller's family, to all the families that are up here in Jesus name. Amen. I just have one scripture I want to share with you this morning, and I'm going to pray, and I'm going to release you. It's a very familiar passage of scripture, and I just uh, sensed to read it this morning. I've read it before, but it's definitely worth reading again. It's Philippians 4, Philippians the fourth chapter, verses um, 6 through 6 and 7. Hallelujah. You're welcome, sir. Uh Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses six and seven. Message me, Mark Hamlin, through Messenger. Um, if you're not friends with me on my Facebook page, uh, any of you, you can hit me on my Facebook page. It's under Mark Bryant Bryant. It's M-A-R-C-B-R-Y-A-N-T, B-R-Y-A-N-T, because uh, my other page got hacked, so I had to start a new page. All right, Philippians, the fourth chapter, going to lift up two verses to you this morning. We thank God for this time of prayer. I pray that God has lifted you and shifted you this morning. So I'm just going to lift up two scriptures and pray us out. Also, if this is really blessing you this morning, press the share button or tag someone in this service. Happy Sunday to everybody. Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses six and seven. I'm reading from the Amplified Bible. Listen to this, y'all. It says, do not be anxious. This is so good. Do not be anxious or worried about anything. Who am I talking to today? Who out here is anxious or you're worried about something? And you may say, well, I'm not worried about it, but it's like on your mind or it's, it's, it's on you. No, the Bible says here, Paul is saying here, he says, do not be anxious or worried about anything. And I know that that's challenging sometimes. It may be easier said than done, but the Lord is admonishing us through, yes, Lisa Raza, he's admonishing us through the book of Philippians by Paul. Do not be anxious or worried about anything. And the only way to really come into that place of not being anxious or worried about anything, we have to tighten up. <laughs> now, Ricardo says, Woo, child, this hit me hard. Amen. Hard for me. Amen. The reason, I'm going to tell you what it is. The reason that we're anxious or worried about certain areas of our life, and this may be a hard pill to swallow. But it's for all of us. This may be a hard pill to swallow. And we want, you know, why, why we as Christians or believers are anxious or worried about things. Uh, because there's a part of us, we may believe God, but we don't believe God in that area. Because if you believe God, and it's all areas that we all have to come up in. Uh, and, and I pray that this stretches you and it causes you to grow and causes you to come to a place. But when you trust God, a hundred percent. Trust God a hundred percent. And we have to grow to that if we're not there yet. And trust God for mostly anything. When you trust God, you're not going to worry. When you trust God, you're not going to be anxious. It's just like me as an, okay, take me as a natural person or take, take God or, or take, take a husband, wife, a friend, uh, so even someone who's very close to you. If someone close to you says, I'm going to pay your bills every month. I'm going to pay your bills every month. Tell me what your bills are and uh, send me the total. I'm going to send you the money. I'm going to cash app you or send you the money. I'm going to take care of your bills for a year. Now, if this is a trusted friend, this is so good because I didn't even plan on saying none of this. If, if it's a trusted friend or someone or a trusted family member, and you know they have the means to do it, and you know that their word is true, you're going to rest in what they're telling you because if you have a track record with the person and they've always kept their word, they've always, if you ask for something or you, they've, done, they've always done for you, you're not going to worry. So it's how much more, if we can believe in that natural person, how much more should, should we believe that God is really going to take care of us? Now, the thing with God is he doesn't always move on our timetable or he doesn't always move it the way we want it to move it. But God, even today, no matter what we've all been through on this line, we have to we have to admit that God is really taking good care of us 
even in spite of the things we're going through. God has taken good care of us. Can I get a witness? Has God been taking good care of you? I'm sure none of y'all are starving. None of y'all are hungry. We all a little thick. That means we've been eating good. Some of us do good. Me. <laughs> but that's a whole other subject. So when it says here, do not be anxious or worried about a thing. And we're anxious or we're worried in a certain situation. That means we really don't believe God can do it or that God will do it. Amen. So if we can believe, the Bible says, if ye be carnal or natural or evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts to them that ask? Amen. So we have to come to a place where 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, casting all, somebody type in all, casting all your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. Amen. So Philippians 4 and 6 says, do not be anxious or worried about anything. But in everything, every six, listen to this, y'all. Do not be anxious or worried about anything. So I want us to come to a place today where we're not worried or anxious about anything. Amen. It says, but in everything, every circumstance and situation by prayer and petition, with, I don't want to go too fast. It says, don't be. So we want to come today. We want to learn today that we're not going to be anxious. We're not going to be anxious. We got, okay, let's make this confession. Say, I'm not going to be anxious and I'm not going to worry. That's a good place to praise God. I'm not going to be, say it out loud, wherever you are. If you're in the hospital, say, say I'm not going to be anxious and I'm not going to worry. Why? Because God's got you. You have to know that in your heart that God's got you. We're not, we're not just in church or we're not just in a, a religious forum. We belong to the Lord. He takes good care of us. And we have, we have to come to a place where we don't worry about anything because God's got us. I'm not saying worry is not going to come up. I'm not saying fear is not going to come up. I'm not saying anxiety is not going to come up. It's going to come up because that's why it's in the word of God. It does come up. But we have to come to a place where we hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand. We, God is not like people. People will be with you one day and, and drop you like a hot potato the next day. God is not like people. If God said he's going to do something, he's going to do it. Amen. So we have to come to a place where we trust God in everything, where we trust God ultimately with our life. So we have to come to a place where we say, you know what? I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be anxious. I'm not going to worry. So Philippians, even if I don't get to the next verse, I want you to get this. Philippians 4 and 6, it says, do not be anxious. We all get anxious sometimes. We all get antsy sometimes. We all question sometimes. We all, it all happens to us. So I'm saying, the word is saying, do not be anxious or worried about anything. But in everything, what should we do in every situation? What should we do in every circumstance? Every circumstance and every situation, we have to pray. We have to give it to God. We have to practice. Give When, when your kids dump stuff on you, you got to give it to God. When your job dump stuff's on you, you got to give it to God. When you get bad news in a text, you got to give it to God. When you get bad news over the phone, you have to give it to God. When people call you with their problems, you got to give it to God. And don't just give it to God. Teach the people that's calling you to give it to God. Let me say that one more time for y'all in the back to here. When the people call you and they're stressed out and they're worried and they're anxious and they're trying to, to, to overwhelm you with their stuff, you got to stop them in their tracks and let them teach them to give it to God. You, if that means you stop them, you listen to them and you pray with them, but you got to teach your kids. You got to teach the people that's calling you, teach the people that's confiding. Don't carry all their stuff. You got to teach them to give it to God. That's right, LBS Moore. You got to teach them because we ain't going to be here all, all always. Mother, no, no matter how mothers, fathers, single, we're not going to be here. So teach your children to give it to God. Teach your grandchildren to give it to God. Teach those people, teach those friends that call you with their problems. Teach them to give it to God. You love them. If you can help them, you help them. You do what God tells you to do, but you got you got to be a teacher in this in this stance. You you don't just carry God didn't call you to carry people's stuff. Let me say that again. God didn't call you to carry people's stuff. Yes, we should be compassionate. Yes, we should be loving. Yes, we should help when we can help. But let me tell you, you got to teach people. See, that will mature them. You have to teach them to go to God. And if you if they're not at that place where you are, if they're not as strong as you are, you pray with them right then, right then and say, you know, whatever they're calling you, but say, hey, 
Stop. Okay, you finish. You ask me how they finish. Once they finish, you calm down and you begin to pray into that situation or you pray with whatever it is that they need. So when God does it, they'll see, wow, God did that for me. He answered my prayer. But if you carry everything, if you do it all for them, they're not going to learn a lesson. They have to learn. They have to learn the lesson. Amen. Whatever we all we all have to learn it. We all have to learn how to stop depending on people and to depend on God. Let me say it again. We all had to learn. All of us on this line, we had to learn to depend. Maybe someone died in your family that was that took care of you. I have a lot of widows on this line. And their husband had passed. And their husbands were great providers. But let me tell you something. These women had to learn, or maybe you're divorced or separated or in something complicated. When these men left their lives, when these men went home to be with the Lord, and I have a lot of widows on this line, they had to learn to depend on God because life goes on. I know I got some widows up here that's with me this morning. Life goes on. Like bills still keep coming. And I'm telling you, we have to learn to depend on God. If you're single, you have to depend on God. If you're married, you have to depend on God. You got to depend on God to take care of you and to be there for you. Amen. Because when people go home, everybody got their own life to live. When people go home, you still got to do what you got to do. So we all have what no matter if you're single, married. Uh, separated, complicated, <laughs> whatever the case, you have to depend on God. And so we have to teach our children. We have to teach our friends. We have to teach our, those are, we have to teach them to depend on God so they don't wear you out. Caleb says, yes, that part, life goes on, depend on God. We got to depend on God. This is so good because this is not, I don't have no notes in front of me. So this is what God wants you all to know today. Num okay, Philippians 4 and 6, do not be anxious or worried about anything. So I want to bring you to a place and encourage you in this place today to do not be anxious. And of course, we all feel anxiety. Of course, when you love people, you can tend to worry, but worrying is not going to answer no, worrying and being anxious will not answer no prayers. Yes. Um, Mom Roxy Star says, I've learned how to lean and depend on Jesus. Yes, we have to learn how to lean and depend on Jesus. Amen. So verse six, Philippians four and six, do not be anxious or worried about anything. So this, this morning, I want you to leave with, I'm not going to be worried and I'm not going to be anxious because what am I going to do? I'm going to put this situation, I'm going to continue to pray to God. We can pray to God 24 seven. We have a con we that are believers, we that have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives. We can uh, depend on God in every situation. We can go to God in prayer anytime we want to. Amen. The pa a pastor don't have to talk to you, talk to God for you. A prophet don't have to talk to God for you. An apostle don't have to talk to God for you. You can talk to God for yourself. You can go to God in prayer for yourself. Amen. Don't be anxious about or worried about anything. That's your that's your assignment for this week. That you're not going to worry. And let me let me tell you something. We're we're always faced with stuff. Somebody type in stuff. We are always faced with stuff in this life. You're always going to be faced with stuff. Your stuff. Your children's stuff. Uh, your boo stuff. Who stuff? Who you're always going to be faced with stuff. Job stuff. Whatever case you're going to be filled with stuff. But it's how you deal with the stuff when it comes your way. Amen. I'm not telling you that you're not going to be. We all deal with stuff. Oh, God, can we talk? We all deal with stuff. But it's not that we're not going to deal with stuff, family stuff, whatever the case may be. But it's how you deal with it. And you have to deal with it with the Lord. And you have to really ask God to help you. Because let me tell you something. It does. It can get overwhelming. If you don't have the Lord and you're not, you don't talk to God, it can be very overwhelming. Going to court can be very overwhelming. Putting things in order can be very overwhelming. Hallelujah. But you have to do what you have to do in Jesus name. Okay. Philippians 4, 6. Paul is telling you, do not be anxious or worried about anything. And of course, while we're hearing this, it sounds good. But when I get off this line, you have to deal. When we get off this service this morning, you have to deal with real life stuff. <clears throat> Amen. That's right. It's how you deal with it. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So your word today is do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, in every situation and in every circumstance, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your request, your specific requests known to God. So what you do is you, you whatever you need, you believe in God for, you keep going to God. 
What is uh, Matthew 7, 7 says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. You have to stay in the place of prayer. You have to you have to keep that phone line on the in your heart where you go to God in prayer. When people get on your nerves, you got to be like, Lord, help me. You got to you just got to I mean, people gonna think you going you going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, but you got to just stay there because let me tell you something. Don't let people pull you out of your joy, your peace and your strength. You have to stay connected to the Lord. If you got to pray under your breath, if you got to say Jesus, <laughs> that's all right. Sometimes that's all you have the strength to do is say Jesus. But I'm telling you, this will help you. Amen. So do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, in every situation, pray. In every circumstance, pray. And everything you're going through, pray. Pray, give it to God. And you ask God, Lord, what should I do? If, Like I said, if you can do something, you do it. I'm not just saying pray and don't do nothing, but you pray and see what God would have you to do. If he don't lead you to do nothing, if you can't do nothing, you pray, you give it to God, you love him, you give him a hug, and you just watch, sit back and watch God move. Amen? Verse 6, do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every situation, and every circumstance by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your requests known to God. Verse seven says, now after you, after you do all that, somebody type in the word after, after. So when you do that, then some things are gonna happen after. Only after, only after, only after you give it to God, only after you make your request known to God, only after, only after. If you don't do verse six, you can't read verse seven. If you don't do verse six, you can't receive from verse seven. Amen. And a lot of times we want to do, uh, we have to do our part. You can't, you can't ask God, you can't receive the promises of God if you didn't do what he asked you to do. You cannot receive the promises of God if you have not done what God asked you to do first. Amen. So verse six says, uh, do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and situation by prayer and petition with thank with thanksgiving. Father, I give you this case, this situation. And I thank you with thanksgiving. Continue to make your, your specific requests known to God. When you talk to God, be specific. Tell God what you want. Tell God where you want to live. Tell God what doors you want him to open. Tell God the pay you need to make. Tell him you need good benefits. Tell him you want to work X amount of days. You know, tell God, be specific. Somebody type in specific. If you believe in God for a husband or a wife, be specific. <laughs> tell God what you want. Tell God what you don't want. Now, don't, don't, don't put too much pressure on folks, but you know, be specific. Tell God what you want. Amen. Be specific. Amen. You better nowadays, you better be very specific if you want somebody in your life. You have to be very specific and very discerning. That's a whole nother topic. Okay, verse seven, it says, and, and the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Jesus is yours. You can only have the peace. God bless you, Liz Smith. You can only have this peace once you do verse six, I'm going to read verse six and seven together. Listen, y'all, do not be anxious or worried about anything. Philippians four and six, do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance, every single circumstance, every six, every single situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your requests, your specific requests known to God. And then the peace of God, listen to this, because we need God's peace. When you're going through, you need the peace of God. How do I get the peace of God? I get the peace of God by giving every situation to God in prayer, every circumstance to God in prayer, all my family drama to God in prayer, all my specific requests. I get the peace when I get, you can't give the, you can't carry their problems. You can't carry your problems and have peace. Let me drink to that. You can't carry people's stuff and your stuff and have peace. No, it doesn't work. You have to give it to God. I'm going to read this read this again and close it out. Philippians 4, 6. Do not be anxious or worried about anything, but in everything, every circumstance and, every, and situation 
by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. Verse seven says, and the peace of God, that peace which reassures the heart, that peace, that peace which transcends all understanding, that peace which stands guard over your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus is yours. Amen. How many people want uh, that peace? You want to walk in peace. You have to follow the guidelines. You have to give it to God. You have to cast all your concerns on God. Every circumstance. You can't be a spiritual Indian giver. You can't give it to God and then come take it back. A lot of you, we give it to God and then we take it back. You give it to God on the altar, then you come and take it back. No, give it to God. Give those children to God. Give that circumstance to God. Give that complicated situation to God. Give that baby mama drama to God. Give all that mess to God. Give it to God. Go to God in prayer. Give it to God. First Peter 5 and 7 says, casting all your cares upon him because he cares for you. Give it to God and let God work it out. Because let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you this. It's too much for you. Let me take a drink to that. I got another word. If you're in something and it's too much for you, you better give it to God. That means that's a sign because God don't want you carrying all this mess and all this drama. You and he doesn't want your peace interrupted. You got to give it to God. Now, Ricardo says you are so right. Can't give it to God and then take it back. That hit. <laughs> yeah, we got we got to give it to God. God, I give you my sons. I give you my daughters. I give you this mess I'm in. I give you this uncomfortable situation. I give you this situation. I give you my job. I give you my mind. I give you my body. I give you everything. Lord, help me and grace me to work it out. Amen. That's your word today. Amen. That's your challenge. What's your challenge today? Your challenge today is from the scripture I just read. Do not be anxious or worried about it a thing. But in everything, every circumstance, situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, continue to make your specific requests known to God. Your homework assignment for this week is for this week and throughout your life is do not be anxious or worried about anything. If you find yourself being worried, if you see yourself coming into anxiety, if you see somebody stressing you out and rowing you up, you better give it to God. You're like, uh, 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 nope, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. Mm -mm. One of the things I did. I don't have, I probably have it, but I, I don't know if I can put my finger on it right now. I may be able to real, real quick. Let's see. Oh, I do have it. I gave you seven. I do have it. Thank you, Lord. I gave you seven things to remember in 2023. I'm going to close with this. I gave you seven things to remember in 2023. I have the paper still somewhere. If y'all need a paper, let me know. Or, uh, but... I gave you seven things to remember in 2023, but one of the things was, I'm going to read it because it's, it just hit my spirit. One of the things, I'm going to close with this. this is, we, we, we almost, okay, we're doing good time. One of the things I'm going to close with this is uh, one of the things I gave you for seven things to remember in 2023 was number five. Don't allow anything or anyone to disturb or to disturb or rob you of your peace and joy. You have to purpose in your heart. You have to purpose in your heart. I'm not going to let nobody rob my joy or my peace in Jesus name. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Isaiah 26 and 3 says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Uh, and the joy of the Lord is our strength. You have to purpose in your heart. Amen. You have to purpose in your heart. You, you will not allow anything or anyone to disturb or rob you of your peace and joy. Amen. So we're going to close with that. That's your challenge for today. We're, we all face stuff. I've been going through some things the past two weeks, but God is keeping me and God is showing us something strong. And let me tell you something. I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. But when you have a heart that's right and you want to do right, God will help you. Amen. God will fight for you when you have a heart. Might not always do the right thing. I don't do the right thing all the time. But the word says, blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Amen. So we thank God. We want to be pure in heart. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. We thank you for this word this morning, oh God. And we pray that this morning that the people would come up and learn that no one has to be anxious or worried about anything. But we need to trust you more. Father, help us. We believe, but help our unbelief this morning in Jesus' name. And help us to navigate through situations. Help us to navigate 
through challenges. Help us to navigate through our problems. Lord, teach us to trust you and to cast it all upon you because you care for us. Help us not to be Indian, spiritual Indian givers, to give it to you and take it back, to give it to you and try to put our two cents in. Lord, we cast all of our cares, our worries, our frustrations upon you this morning because you care for us. First Peter 5 and 7. So Father, I thank you for your sons. I thank you for your daughters. I thank you for those that are on this morning. I pray that you bless them. And Lord, let this word settle in their hearts. Let it settle in their minds. And Father, we just thank you for breakthrough and answer prayer and things shifting and changing in families. For my singles, for my for my single men, my single women, my widows, my widowers, those that are married, my married couples, Father God, even those that may be in something complicated, Father God, work out the confusion, work out the complication, Lord, because you are not the author of confusion, Father God. And we thank you, Lord, for moving mightily for your sons and daughters today, Lord, in many situations that are on this line, but there's nothing too hard for you. So grace your sons, grace your daughters. And we just thank you for this word. And it's a challenge for us to, to not worry about anything, but to trust you in everything. And Father, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. If you receive that word in prayer, say amen, amen, amen. Jill said, this was a good word I needed to hear this today. Amen. Yeah, we all need it. We all need it. So we don't, we can really enjoy our life. I want you all to enjoy your lives, not just to exist, not just to coast in life. The Lord said, I have come that you would have life and have it more abundantly to the full until it overflows. And you can't enjoy your life carrying your stuff and people's stuff. Amen. All right, I'm done. Let's give God praise. God bless you, Sh Shaniqua Hunt. God bless you all that are on this morning. Love you all with the love of the Lord. Uh, we thank God for his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. Amen, amen, amen to you, LBS Moore. God bless you, Liz Smith, Mary Llewellyn, K. Love, uh, Von A. Jackson, Maria. We love you and bless you all in Jesus' name. I pray that you have a blessed Sunday. Happy Sunday. Love you too, Donna. Love you too, Suzanne Marrow. I pray that you all enjoy this day. And I just, I, I release a peace and a calm over you this morning. And I just want you all that receive it, just receive it. I release a peace and a calm for you this morning in Jesus name. Let this week be a week of peace. Let this week be a, a week of tranquility. Let this week be a, a week of rest. In Jesus' name. Love you too, Letty Sloan. You too. Uh, love you too. Uh, thank you, Minister Steph. Uh, thank you. Love me to life. That's right. Love me to life, Liz Smith. I need it. Thank you. <laughs> Amen. I release the peace of God over everyone this morning. Let their day be blessed. Uh, let it be filled with the anointing of God in Jesus' name. And whatever, I just pray that whatever decision you need to make, that God will grace you and help you to make godly decisions and godly choices. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a blessed day. Enjoy your day, everybody. Until next time, happy Sunday. Oh, next Saturday night, next Saturday night, next Saturday night, 6, 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. is our four hours of corporate prayer. 69 Myrtle Street, Cranford, New Jersey. Come and be in prayer with us. It is definitely praying time. Love you too, Sonia. Love you too, everybody. Have a blessed and peaceful day.